I'll call this uh, study session of September 3rd, 2019 to order. And our first order of business is Pastor Jim Rudolph of First General Baptist Church. And we'll give us an invitation. Pastor Jim. Pray again. We praise you, God, for the day, for the blessings of the day. Uh, we praise you for government and for those who serve to make our community and our state a better place. And so, Lord, we ask that you would bless them with wisdom, with insight, with direction. Lord, we ask that you would help them to make decisions that not only are, are pleasing to you, but that benefit us as your people, that we can be doing what you've called us to be as individual believers, as a community, and as a world. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <laughs> we have three presentations this evening. First is the swearing in of our new council member. Ms. Gail. solemnly swear that I possess all the qualifications for City Council Member Ward 3 as required by the laws of the State of Missouri and the Charter and Ordinances of the City of Cape Girardeau, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the State of Missouri, and the Charter and Ordinances of the City of Cape Girardeau, and that I will faithfully demean myself in the office of City Council Member Ward 3 of the City of Cape Girardeau, so help me God. child. Our oldest is in our last practice before her first game of her senior volleyball season at Cape Central, so I wasn't going to ever miss that. So. <laughs> Go Tigers. <laughs> was not the worst flood we've ever experienced as a city. It was only the fifth highest flood peaking at 46.29 feet, but it did break records. It absolutely shattered the record for the longest duration flood. It lasted 144 days above flood stage, shattering the previous record of 125 days set in 1993. Those 144 days above flood stage demanded our people man the pump stations downtown around the clock, 24-7, to ensure downtown does not flood. 
This translates into 432 eight hour shifts and totals 3,456 man hours. We should remember this not only disrupted the work schedules for our crew, but also required their families to figure out how to work around the various shifts. Should have the families up here too. During the days of the flooding, Cape experienced quite a number of rain events, and a few of those were pretty intense. Mary Weather Station could plump 70,000 gallons per minute, and at times that was not enough. Throw in a few lightning strikes, it would get pretty nerve wracking for the guys working those shifts. I'm not sure any of you have ever had the pleasure of stepping into one of the two pump stations downtown, but let me tell you, neither one is what I would consider comfortable. One has some room, but the other is much smaller and cramped. Both are cold, damp, noisy, windowless block buildings, not exactly hospitable. But our dedicated pump station crew stuck it out in those pump stations for 144 days, day in, day out, 432 consecutive shifts. Then add in the daily inspections required when the river was above 42 feet. <coughs> Excuse me. Of the 50, on 50 of the 144 days, the river was above 42 feet, which required from one to four inspections of the full length of the flood wall and levee. On those 50 days, we had men working in the pump stations and some more men making the inspections. To carry out these duties, over half the crew was assigned to flood wall work each day. Some days we only had three guys on regular work shift to handle the normal day-to-day -day activities. To say the crew was challenged is an understatement. To add another layer of complexity and challenge, a few of our crew members resided in Southern Illinois and could not easily get to and from work in the weeks. In those weeks, because 146 and 3 were closed due to flooding. This necessitated these employees drive well over an hour to get to the pump station to work for their eight hour shift and another hour to get home. They got off at midnight on a weekday, they had to be back at work at 7.30 the next morning. Over the 144 days, an immense amount of water flowed by Cape Girardeau. A rough estimate is more than 63 trillion gallons of water passed us by. Thankfully, the flood wall and levee are well maintained to protect our city for that water that goes by. The public works employees are not the type to seek out the limelight. In fact, they run from it. We believe their dedication and extraordinary efforts manning the pump station during this record-breaking flood event deserve our praise and recognition, and we thank you from the bottom of <laughs> Mr. Menz and friends, would you mind to just take a few steps back to that, start up against sure. that stair so I can see your faces and all smile and look this way for me, please? Thank you. And hold on. Thank you. That'll do. Thank you. One more. Amen. 
beautiful business property of the month. Mitch and Julie Malone, Malone Arcade. I want to tell you, if you've not driven by this on Broadway, the corner of Broadway and Clark, the old stone building, I love the stone, I've got the same stone on my house, by the way. That tells us about what period it was built. But uh, the landscaping is beautiful. Turn around, she wants to get your picture. I want, I want to know a little secret after she takes this picture. Up here. Thank you. I understand that uh, you're the one that does a lot of the landscaping. How do you do that? Is there a, how can I get my wife out here? <laughs> <laughs> it's my therapy. It's your therapy? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. We're going to have to work on that. Yeah. Thank you all. Okay, thank you so much. Yes. No. no. You can always have my thunder. 
<laughs> Is there anybody here this evening to speak about something not on the agenda? Good evening to the council. I'm uh, Pastor Scott Johnson. This is my assistant, Sean Clemens, with uh, Clemens Clean. Uh, he's also our uh, outreach coordinator for our ministry. Um, what we were going to come and ask the uh, council is on September 14. We're doing uh, uh, Enough is Enough cleanup in the South Cape area. Basically, what, we, what we're doing is we, uh, we got to a point where we said enough is enough. And it's, it's okay to have other people come into your community and help you out, but it's time for us to step up and take the initiative to take care of our own community. And so what we've been doing is myself and Sean and uh, Pastor Bonnie, he, he was supposed to be here, but he, his business didn't close at five, so he's running behind. We've been meeting up every Saturday. And what we did is we came up with a uh, plan that we're getting all the people, bring them slowly to the table, the ones that really want to be a part of it, and we're saying if you're a leader of any sort, a pastor, a leader, business owner, whatever, it's time for you to step up and help take care of our own community over here. And if not, get out the way and let the people that are there do their job. I know we met with uh, Scott and uh, Shelly in one of the uh, forum community meetings that they had. There wasn't a lot of people there, but uh, what we're doing now is with what this cleanup is about making the people aware that it starts with us. It may only be us starting to clean up, but the whole purpose is us getting together and uniting. So what's going to happen is, on that morning, we're going to meet at uh, Pastor Bonner's place over here at the 400 block of Good Hope at Tr True Q, and it's going to start at 8, and we're going to go out and do what we do, and following that, we're going to have a family day at the uh, Indian Park immediately following, just getting all the families uh, together. So what we're asking is uh, that if the council would consider helping us out in this project by way of uh, bags, I just need bags. Yeah, trash bags. Trash, trash, trash. Maybe some gloves if you can do that. Because we're going to be out. Um, we're going to have... Uh, Julia was signaling right behind you okay. that she will help get bags. How many are expecting, Scott? You know, it's, it's, it's quite a few. It's right? quite a few because yeah. we're going to have a long there's a team of us, some of the guys in the neighborhood that have lawn care businesses. We're all getting together. It's going to be on ride. It's going to be mowing, cleaning okay. up. Saturday, the 14th. I might be able to get you a few folks. Okay. Yeah. This, and that's and that's what we're going to do because then we're going to, as we get these people together, then we're going to start taking a look at uh, getting some people together that can really get in. And we're going to start taking a look at these murders that are happening in our city. Sometimes it's about having the people that are in the know take care of the problem. I mean, we understand that, you know, people want to blame the police and things like that. We get it, you know, it's the police and then you don't tell them what they need to know and then, you know, it's just a big mess. We get it. So we're stepping up to take the initiative to uh, get our people united in our community. And this is not just going to be a one-time thing. I think each month or twice a month, we're going to be doing something different. And all we're asking is that you all, with the council, just back us. We actually have a flyer. We forgot to bring it. And again, this is not even just about the South Side community. This is about our city as a whole, the city of Cape Girardeau, all of us collaborating and working together. So as we move forward, we just ask for you guys' help. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I'll uh, all, uh, all, uh, uh, distribute it to the council. I get to it. Send it to me or bring it right. All right. Any other questions? All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. And I'm sure we can work to find the bags and gloves and whatever else you need as far as materials go to help get some of that stuff done. Thank you. And uh, I'm also sure that if you accumulate a whole lot of stuff, uh, we might even be able to find a way to pile it all up and the city will come a whole lot. All right. Appreciate that. Whatever we can do to help. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, man. All right. Thank you. Anybody else? For any item not on the agenda. Hi. My name is Jason Briggs. I'm the man God, the most merciful and the most compassionate. I came here today to talk to the city council. I just came from the police station and I'm not allowed to go in there anymore because I asked them for a list of fleet vehicles. 
I want to ask you, am I out of line to ask for the list of new vehicles? Anyone here? Can I ask that question? Any of you? Am I out of line? Should I be kicked out of the police station? Any of you? All right, moving right along. I got five minutes, right? Yes, sir. All right, anybody? Can you answer any of Can you answer? I cannot go on. Why a list of new vehicles will not be something that's. Um, I went four times, and of course they used uh, national security as reason. But uh, any can you justify that for me or answer the question? There's a lot of information on uh, City of Cape's website as far as the budget and the uh, information uh, that if you want to look, I'm sure there's a lot of information. No, there is a problem. We've got already done that. Oh, we've already done. All right. And I'm looking for uh, if you. Let's just take the Dodge Charger for it, just real quick. The Dodge Charger got a V8 in it. I don't know all your numbers. I'm going to use a city comparable to Cape called Quincy, Illinois. Now, if you take a Dodge Charger and the police business is 88% domestic, which means they're going out to a car. We put them in smart cars, 18% right there. And I can't even get the number of what you even have to even try to explain it to you. But I can tell you this, what's our biggest cost, guys? Police and fire. What's down the most? Guys, crime and fire's down, everybody. Crime and fire's down. Ask the FBI. Okay, so these simple things I'm gonna ask for a lot more. But I can't even go there to even file a Freedom of Information Act. Think about that for a minute. And I mean, I understand. But this is the best way to describe it. I walk into our city of Cape courtroom. No one stands for the judge when the judge walks in. I mean, that's not even court. The bailiff doesn't even announce the judge. Okay, and then when you walk into court, the police officer has this big old bulletproof vest on, which I applaud Cape not to have a metal detector. I applaud Kate not to put up these special screens so I can see anybody coming. I want us to get back to us like those two gentlemen before me. It takes us. But what I'm trying to get at is if the police will not let someone challenge them and they use security of 80 men, how are we going to move this? Do you, does any of you got anything? I'm going to move on if you don't have anything. I would like any of you um, to please try and talk to the police. Like I said, I can do Freedom of Information Act. It just takes longer to get the information, but I will eventually get it. So this game of cat and mouse is ridiculous because, like I said, if we don't get the control of cost from the police and fire, give you another example real quick. We call 911. And you send out, you send out all these cars, a big fire truck, the police car, and they go to the side of the street and close down the street because they're scared. Okay, they're closing down both sides of the street. We're wasting time, guys. Lives are going to be lost. We're wasting time to try to secure stuff. We want the ambulance drivers, fire drivers. We have technology down. The public sector still grows, even though technology is way up. We know if it's a 500-pound guy, and we need to send out enough people to carry a 500-pound guy. I mean, we know this. So why are we sending out all of these resources? Come on. All of these resources for these small things. Because what we decided is America, we're going to unionize and everything's going to be the same. And they learn these lessons. They go to these meetings. We waste all this time to basically unify everything so everything's done the same because the city's incorporated, right? You don't want to get sued. Everything has to be a standard. And just like the law, it says normal, normal, standard. So like I said, if you guys don't stand up for me, nobody will. Moving right along. I'm downtown. That's your I'm getting minutes. beat up Five every minutes. night. I'm getting Five beat minutes. up every night, guys. I come downtown. I'm getting beat up. And the police have turned me into an undesirable. I got a peace deserving ticket. Either I'm allowed to protest and say fuck and shit and anything I want to protest, or I can't. Either case gonna invite me or they're not. But I need your help. 
because the money, as soon as you guys all know this, the stock market has gone nothing but up since 2009. Long stock market. We got circuit breakers, guys. And there's a chance it might keep going up, but come hey, on. Your five minutes, bro. I know. I just want to say a few more things. No. I'm just going to go downtown and get beat up. You're, and what are you guys going to do tonight? Your five minutes are up. I know. I just okay. said that. Thank you. Thank you. Any comments? Any one of you? Anybody else? Thanks, guys. If not, we'll move into the agenda review. Uh, there are no public hearings tonight. Uh, on the consent agenda, we have uh, the minutes and then items uh, two, three, four, uh, five, and six on the second and third readings for the last meeting. Uh, two and three are amending chapter seven. Uh, two is the all night pool covers, uh, three is the storm shelters uh, change. Uh, number four is the imposition of the tax that was passed by voters uh, last month. Uh, number five is the uh, special warranty deed for the property on Bernice. And number six is the temporary construction easement uh, for the Hopper Road uh, box culvert. Uh, number seven is a resolution uh, that uh, begins uh, our revenue bonds, refunding of some revenue bonds that will be uh, doing a process of uh, doing bonding for the city hall and airport projects. So we're starting that pro uh, that process in a couple of different deals tonight, and this is the, uh, the first one uh, authorizing that. Um, anything on consent agenda that uh, you'd like to remove or have any questions on? Uh, Scott, just real quick, quick clarification on the record. The, the item on the agenda relates to the refunding of water revenue bonds for water projects, the issuing of bonds in respect of the city hall or the airport will come to the area. Thank you. It's all in that same thing. So. Does everybody understand? Yes. Um, new ordinances. Number eight is uh, the uh, eight and nine are the project development plan for the Ramsey Run uh, proposal out uh, Dalhou in the Dalhousie area. Uh, off Bloomfield Road, and then number nine is the rezoning of that property uh, for the plan development. Uh, number ten will be the um, execution of amendment number one to the snow removal equipment uh, uh, contract, and then number eleven is the uh, uh, accepting of the permanent utility easement, the temporary construction easement uh, on Mountain Drive. Um, number twelve is an ordinance accepting the collector's deed. Uh, on property on Main Street. I'll make sure that these are right over. So. Then number 13 is the uh, water works system refunding as well. Any questions on any of those ordinances? We have two appointments tonight for the Gulf Force Advisory Board and the Commission and District Bureau, which I think uh, is probably good. Okay. Any questions, Scott? Any questions about the agenda? If not, I will call the regular session to order. And we have roll call. Mr. Essex? Here. Mayor Fox? Here. Mr. Garn? Here. Ms. Kinder? Here. Ms. Moore? Here. Mr. Preston? Here. Mr. Thomas? Here. At this time, I'll entertain a motion to adopt the agenda. So moved. Second. Second by Mr. Kessler. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carried. We have no public hearings. Any individuals here this evening to talk about any specific item that is listed on the agenda this evening? So we talk about it before you guys talk about it? Any of those issues? You're talking about any particular resolution that's on the agenda tonight. Okay, that wasn't my question. My question is, oh, do we not wait till after you talk to her or talk to you about each one while it's happening? This is no. the time to talk about all the issues. If I want to talk issues. about every one of them in five minutes. That's right. All right thank you. Mr. 
set agenda.
difficult, difficult thing. I would, I would love to tell you that this one amendment is going to take care of it, but I would be dishonest in saying that. So, as they go through the process, they will probably run into some more issues with, with buying American products. But it's, it's, not, it's not just the American product; it, it's, it has to be a certain percentage of the entire thing. So as they, as they add more adjustments to it, it changes. Bruce, Scott, on this particular piece of equipment, it's already the, the buy American part of it's already been approved. Okay. Uh, Why is it buy American? So this one's this. this Aren't is all it. American companies worldwide can, companies now? You can be waived. You can be waived down to sixty percent, um, and MB and the company uh, already ran their numbers through FAA. FAA basically requires, in order to get the waiver, they, they require those companies to give them the country that a product, a piece of equipment, the little part is being made in, and what the cost is. The proprietary, the proprietary issues involved with that are extremely touchy, uh, especially for the three bigger uh, companies. Originally, we were looking for a front-end loader that would be an all-year kind of a piece of equipment that you would push uh, a, a separate floor that would head its own engine. Uh, but we just simply, after going out from two RFPs and two companies, uh, uh, and they were the larger ones, uh, we just simply couldn't get it. FAA uh, as used to be able to get used to be able to have a central region, your regional offices waive those, and now Washington D.C. is the only one that can waive that. And we, we just gave up on the front end lower. Uh, this is an entire truck. Quite honestly, in the end, I'm kind of happy with the way things work out because we will also get a, a rotary broom and another large plow, so that only now it's not. Uh, it won't be ready for this winter, unfortunately. Yeah. But the, it, it, it's, it's a federal right. requirement. It's a federal law requirement of the yeah. FAA is, is where right. that, that, the genesis of that is. So the federal law says you have to buy American. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes. So, yeah. Is that the same with the police cars that don't buy their all American? Just the airport equipment. The FAA doesn't really buy police cars. Okay, we have a resolution. No further discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? <coughs> Bill number 19-140. An ordinance accepting a permanent utility easement and temporary construction easement from Mary Beth Kinkle at 20, 2574 Mountain Drive in the city of Cape Tarbury. So moved. Second. Motion by Dan, second by Stacy. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Bill number 19-141, ordinance accepting a collector's deed from Cape Girardeau County, the property located at 0 North Main Street, the city of Cape Girardeau. So moved. Second. Motion by Dan, second by Rock. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Bill number 19-143, an ordinance authorizing the issuance of Waterworks System Refunding Revenue Bonds, Series 2019, with the City of Cape Girardeau, Missouri, describing the form and details of the bonds and the covenants and agreements to provide for the payment and security thereof, and authorizing certain actions and documents, and prescribing other matters relating thereunto. Seven minutes. Motion by Robbie. Second. Second by Stacy. Any discussion? If not. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All motion carries. We have two appointments this evening. Uh, first is to the Golf Course Advisory Board, and that appointment will be Cindy Gannon. So moved. Second. Motion by Ryan, second by Robert. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? All motion carries. The Convention and Visitors Bureau is John Himovich. So moved. Second. Motion by Ryan, second by Stacy. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. That motion carries. Is there any other bit? If not, I will accept the motion to adjourn the closed session for the purpose of personnel pursuant to Versailles Section Missouri, Section 610-0213. So moved. Second. Moved by Robbie, seconded by Ryan. All those in favor say aye. Aye. We will adjourn the closed session.
Can you tell us what the closed session is about? Of course enough. Thank you.